Testing. You know you're really crypto living when you eat a banana that you bought off the blockchain. Banana coin. I'm not kidding. This is actually a thing. Banana coin is having their ICO for anybody that is very into bananas. Like, I don't know, you've got to be a banana fanatic to buy into this one maybe that's what they're hoping and this is kind of what we see with the whole ICO mania Sorry, if this uh, live stream cuts out, you'll see a new one on my channel. Because I might have to stop it for a second. Okay, we're back. Bananas, bananas, let's go bananas. B A N A A N A N A N A B A N A. N A N A S. Yes, there's a banana ICO. They are launching Banana Coin. And you heard it here first. There is an ICO for bananas. And let's look into that a little bit right now. But I don't know. You tell me, are there becoming too many ICOs, um, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Or is it just super ass funny? I think all of the above. In a way, you can look at anything multiple ways. So here we have Banana Coin and they've sold 1 million tokens so far. One token, one BCO, is 50 cents. And it uh, BCO will be listed on cost.io. So their, one of their buttons here says buy Bitcoins, or buy with Bitcoins and buy with Ethereum. So. Uh, if you have Bitcoins or Ethereum, you can participate in this ICO. So the first environmentally friendly plantation in LAOS, which Laos, I guess, which has released a utility token based on Ethereum pegged to the export price of one kilogram of bananas. Really? So the token is kilogrammed to one kilogram of bananas. It's a good thing uh, the value of food's going up, I guess, right? So this guy here has lived in Vietnam for 10 plus years investing in real estate and exporting fruit. He invested 50 US dollars in banana coin. Really? But his wife, 500 US dollars. He was luckier. He won a trip to Banana Coin Plantation. Listen to his words during his trip to uh, Vietain Laos. Let's just see the place real quick. I've got to see this plantation.
interesting because like now there are a lot of companies they uh, like they issue some coins from some of them and uh, usually like they try to sell the product that it's very hard to understand and uh, like I like the idea that of uh, like founding funds for agricultural business so yeah it's simple that's why he invested in it I guess so no pesticides eco-friendly it's three years old it's been a profitable business it has government support and real proof asset so basically um, uh, they you know if you look at their uh, roadmap here they were cooperating with uh, specialists on a lease uh, plantation and then they built their own in June 2016 had their first harvest and then September 2017 their first stage of their pre-sale so they have done some proof um, of concept and uh, have a product and have been making some money so that's one good thing so there's all sorts of reasons the def deficit of bananas banana export to China is estimated at 300,000 hectares and the consumption is increasing uh, the price of banana token is protected by the cost of one kilogram of bananas and these are special bananas so cultivated actually we'll go in order here in the medium term our team is planning to increase the production area to a thousand hectares um, and there's there's a shortage uh, of 30,000 hectares so cultivated variety variety of bananas ladyfingers is the most expensive and the most popular on the Chinese market Every participant has the right to personally visit our plantations. That's pretty cool. Um, our business is easy to scale and it is growing into a serious player in the Asian fruit market. Actually, I think it's pretty cool. Not, not going to lie, I might get involved just to go check it out. Um, you know, it's, it's cool. It's, you know, one of those things that would be fun to be involved in. You know? excited for bananas is what you'd have to be so some people might think it's a bad idea some people might love it i know the younger generations might love it kids <laughs> some people uh don't eat wouldn't eat bananas so they would never invest in something like this but let us know if you would So we've got a bunch of news to cover today, and most of it's pretty exciting. Um, Dash had um, had a couple days there where it stood out. It was the only coin that was in green when all the rest were in red. Why was that? You know, you have to ask these questions and look into it a little bit. So um, if we read uh, about Dash, Dash really used to be called dark coin and then they rebranded it to dash so why did they do that um, so obviously it's a coin that was meant for the dark web um, you know and anonymity it's very fast and it's like digital cash the name dash was recommended by the community some time ago we picked up on that and, uh, and the foundation began investigating the use of it and found a trademark application. The whole reason we've acquired the rights was not because the decision was final, but because we need to challenge that trademark application to even be able to use the name. Otherwise, it's a complete non-starter. We absolutely open to everyone's input and always have been. We'd like this process to be 100% transparent. So I guess the community decided to call it Dash. So Dash, known early as Darkcoin, is a very popular alternative cryptocurrency with a focus on transaction speed and privacy. Instead of using a single mining algorithm like uh, Bitcoin's SHA-256 or Litecoin script, it relies on uh, X11. So a, a collection of 11 algorithms which are there to ensure fair distribution of coins between miners which is actually very cool. So as a miner, that would be awesome. At the time of the writing, it holds a firm position on the top 10 uh, cryptocurrency market capitalizations. So it seems like it's a fair free market coin, you know, 
not controlled, very open source and decentralized. I really first heard about Dash about a year ago. I was investing in some uh, altcoins like Monero, e Ethereum, um, Litecoin, and some other smaller ones, Ripple, um, Einsteinium, you know, back when I was buying those coins. Um, and then Dash just took over and blew up past $100. And that's when I really noticed it because I was waiting for Monero to do that and Dash did it way before. So there's something uh, there with Dash. And if you can see here, what news have they been releasing to make, uh, make it do so well? So Dash formed a partnership with Kuva Cash to fight inflation in Zimbabwe with cryptocurrency. And then um, they uh, had an update to keep people on track. And they also have videos here. So Dash News Weekly Recap. Um, so uh, Bitcoin vending machines become cryptocurrency vending machines and add Dash. And that is probably another reason why it's going to go up in and keep going up now that anybody can buy it just going to a hasty market or a convenience store in the city and and uh, going on that ATM and buying it why Bitcoin cash when you can dash and I agree I feel the same way I feel like Bitcoin cash is trying to kind of copy dash in a way because they saw it do so well uh, that along with um, obviously Bitcoin it's trying to copy so dash is digital cash you can spend anywhere and one thing I want to point out is that I realized not not too long ago uh, some time ago that dash was one of the most popular master nodes um, out there so if you go to masternode.pro you can see all the different master nodes which is basically just holding a certain amount of, of coins. And then, uh, you know, cause, cause basically like Bitcoin, it runs off of nodes and everyone who mines it is, uh, is a node. So with proof of uh, stake, you're staking the coins. And when you're holding coins, you get a certain percentage just for holding them. Well, if you have a master node, that means that you are one of the bigger players in that uh, network and you're holding coins and verifying transactions so you get a bigger amount of returns when you're holding master nodes it can basically be your own passive income or business you can live just off of owning master nodes but the thing is you have to have enough money to buy the master nodes and some of them can get quite pricey but there are also some pretty cheap uh, master nodes like as you can see there's some some in the sense but if we look for dash see how much uh, the dash master node is uh, it looks like it's no it's very hard to acquire one now at this point whoever did acquire them uh, back in the day did very well um, if we can even see dash master node uh, let's, let's search for it here do, 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 do. No, cost, 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 cost. Sort by. Um, I just saw it on here. Come on. It's got to be here somewhere. Do, 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 do. There it is. Okay. So, dash to buy one master node. <clears throat> or, sorry, one coin. That's the price of one coin. The master node price is over here. And, uh, so the master node price is node worth. So this coin would be worth uh, 1,015. Most coins are in the three to five thousand dollar range. And then dash, of course, down here is 290 thousand dollars for a dash master node. So those people that have the master nodes don't want to get rid of them because um, it's also it's also a very uh, good income. So you get daily $7,000 from that. Or, no, wait, how does this work? Daily 
daily payout would be doo -doo 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 -doo. current price daily payouts right here so if we go down to dash the daily payout to hold a master node um, it says it's offline but I'm sure it's a couple thousand dollars a month um, or even in the fifty thousand dollar range per month holding a dash and master node so nobody wants to sell them uh, and everyone's you know making a lot of money holding these dash so you know staking it's very profitable so even when everybody's selling all these other coins and bots are selling and selling and on the market nobody's selling dash because the master nodes are very profitable to hold kind of like bitconnect you know how they incorporated that into their system that people would hold it for profit making the price not go down when other you know tokens go down so we also have here um, a technical analysis of the market so it's very short it's a minute and I think this could help everybody very well. For December 1st. Some fires. Christopher Lewis looking at the Bitcoin gold uh, dash and the narrow markets for long-term charts week of December 4th. You can see that Bitcoin gold did fall during the week. Testing basically 250 in what had been a bloodbath in uh, Bitcoin itself, and that's not a surprise that we got a, a similar reaction over here. We need to hold 250. If we do, then I think eventually we'll go higher. Uh, break down below 250, sends the market down to 160. Over here in Dash, we broke $800. We pulled back a bit. We're a bit overbought here, and we are crossing on the stochastic oscillator. I would look for a pullback to 600, maybe even 500 to get involved or break above the top of the candle with an impulsive move to the upside. But you have to start to question how sustainable that would be. Monero, looking a little healthier than some of the other markets, breaking above 200, but I think this is a little bit of a shooting star. Uh, crossing stochastic oscillator suggests that a pullback's coming. Look at about 140 as value. So there you have it if you paid attention to that so basically we have do, 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 Bitcoin gold here um, dash and Monero so I'm gonna pause this live stream and we'll start up again for part two just because I don't want it to get too long What's up, what's up, what's up? So if you are obsessed with bananas or you're in love with them, maybe because you don't have a boyfriend, whatever it is, you now can invest in banana coin. If you believe in bananas and think that they'll rise in value over time. And I'm not joking, this is actually a real thing so the banana coin ICO they've uh, sold already a million banana coins you know this seems like a this seems like a novelty project but really they do have a product they do have a business that's already running uh, if you do invest in the ICO you're uh, invited to go see the plantation in Asia, uh, Vietnam, I think maybe, uh, Vietnam, yep. So they've been doing this for a long time. They actually just decided to uh, open up a plantation though, and they did their harvest in December uh, 16th, and now they're doing a token sale. So um, if you're interested in bananas, or they excite you, then uh, this could be something for you. Some people might think this is a horrible idea. You know, younger generations might jump right into this one. Who knows? You know, I know the older generations would think this is stupid, probably, especially people that don't eat bananas. 
Um, we have some interesting news to talk about today, and we're going to go over this really quick. So Dash, uh, previously known as Darkcoin, uh, they rebranded in uh, 2000, what was it, 2015, and then I started noticing uh, noticing Dash when it passed $100. I didn't even see it coming, but that's why now I follow all these uh, coins that come out and try to share that with you. But why did Dash um, stand out? Why was it in the greens when everything else was going down and in the reds? Well, it's all in the master node. Dash is the most successful master node that you can hold right now. And basically, master nodes are um, basically like staking your, your coins, but to have a master node, you have to have a certain amount of coins. So for TerraCoin, for instance, it's 5,000. And so Dash is the most expensive master node on here. And since it's so expensive, nobody wants to sell their master nodes. And it's so profitable to hold the Dash master node. So many people are just holding on to these coins and staking them. And so that is why even when people are trading in and out of tokens, bots are trading in and out of people's tokens, they're not getting rid of Dash, just like uh, lending coins like BitConnect. They built that into that system so that the coin would go up with time. Here is um, a price analysis for Dash, Bitcoin Gold, and Monero for this week. This is a, a very short analysis. From FX Empires, Christopher Lewis looking at the Bitcoin Gold uh, Dash and Monero markets for long-term charts week of December 4th. You can see that Bitcoin Gold did fall during the week, testing basically 250 in what had been a bloodbath in uh, Bitcoin itself. And that's not a surprise that we got a, a similar reaction over here. We need to hold 250. If we do, then I think eventually we'll go higher. Uh, break down below 250, sends the market down to 160. Over here in Dash, we broke $800. We pulled back a bit. We're a bit overbought here, and we are crossing on the stochastic oscillator. I would look for a pullback to 600, maybe even 500 to get involved. A break above the top of the candle is an impulsive move to the upside. But you have to start to question how sustainable that would be. Monero, looking a little healthier than some of the other markets, breaking above 200. But I think this is a little bit of a shooting star. Uh, crossing stochastic oscillator suggests that a pullback's coming. Look at about 140 as value. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to split up this live stream because it's not uh, cooperating and um, we're having some technical difficulties. So we'll be back with the other half. Just check uh, on our channel and uh, hit that bell down below so you get notified as soon as we're back on air.